you know, when you first pull into the race weekend, you kind of get butterflies, you know, you're, you're pulling into the racetrack, you know, it's the first part of the weekend. And when the back door comes down and the car gets fired up and it starts backing out, it's just like, cool, man, I, this, let's go, let's get it on, I'm ready. Yeah, I was kind of anxious to get the car out yesterday and start it, hear it run. And it sounds pissed off, that's what it does. We ended up losing the motor at Thunderhill. The serpentine belt came off, and it also knocked the dry sump belt off of the oil pump, which, you know, lubricates the engine. So we lost the engine, the, oil, the bearings were messed up, the block was messed up, so we needed a whole new engine. We had to send it back to Mass Motorsports uh, down in Texas. The peace of mind uh, being able to send it to a professional engine builder, especially one that specializes in these type of engines, uh, we know that when we, we get it back, it's going to be perfect, if not even better. And you can tell by the first time you, you flick the key on and the motor fires off that it is one nasty, wicked motor in that car. It's going to be nasty when you take it out on the road race course and wring it out. Healthy. This motor puts out 27 more horsepower than we had before, and the only thing we changed was we put Pennzoil in. It's making more power, so there you go. Can't wait. When we come here to race, you, you always look at the entry list to see who's racing, and we knew Jordan was coming here, and, and Jordan's got his own professional shop. He specializes in GM products and making them go fast. The Camaros in this series are dominant. You know, Ford just can't. They just don't have a foothold. If you look at most of, you know, top three to top five, it's always Camaros, and it's generally fifth gen Camaros. The thing that's, that's really incredible is how fast these Camaros are just when you pick them up at the dealership. I mean, Jordan really has taken this sixth gen Camaro. There's not a lot of parts out there for them right now because they're brand new cars. And right away, that car is fast. GM did an amazing job on that car. It got Motor Trend Car of the Year, which is something that's traditionally held by BMW or you know Audi or some of those other German brands. Um, and that, that speaks volumes for what GM did with that car and the engineering side of it. He's pressing us right away, and our car is heavily modified. It's got everything that you could do to it. And it is one of the, if not the, fastest fifth gen Camaro on the street today. I just walked the uh, autocross course here at Las Vegas, and when we were here last November, they had two courses set up, and it was still huge. Now we only have one course, and it is gigantic. It's like one big road course out there, and that's gonna play right in the hands of the Z28 Camaro. I was hoping for a slightly smaller course this weekend because I know how good that car is in the, in the technical areas and I know I'm a good driver in the technical areas. The big courses, there was some technical elements, but it was mainly like point and shoot, you know? And, and if you get a long straightaway with a couple hundred extra horsepower, one, one to a half second to a second is like that. You walk the course and it's so big that you try to remember every setup, every slalom, uh, and, and kind of stitch it together. But by the time you get to the end of this course, it's, it's, you know, the front part of the course is forgotten. So I take pictures of every slalom, and then I stitch them together back here with the uh, iPad. And then I can review the course page by page by page and walk through it before I get in the car and drive it. We've been saying, hey, we want bigger, we want bigger, we want bigger. And we got bigger. A little tailored towards more horsepower, but this car handles so well that we're gonna kill it through the corners and we're gonna make stuff happen. So keep an eye on him, see where he's at. Kicking ass and taking names.
right, it's on. We're a tenth apart. I saw you post that fit 49. I went, oh, dude, you got to step your game up here. It's always got to be hard. That'll be a battle. That'll be a constant. As oh, usual. The first three runs or so, you're really learning the course. You're really starting from scratch. And, and you get better and better and better each time. But after the third run, now you're really getting real picky about where am I losing a tenth here? Where am I losing a tenth there? And you're trying to clean all that up. So you're trying for that perfect lap. Car's working really well. We're figuring the course out. Um, Ken and I, as usual, are pretty close. We've got them by a little bit right now. You know that you're going to be in for a dogfight. So if you don't bring your best, you're going to come in second place. That's just the bottom line. I love that because that drives me, you know. And, and I ran a faster time than I might have because I was trying to chase Ken. We push each other to the max. Still loose, maybe we can stand that spoiler up. I mean, we're doing 70, 80 miles an hour. Yeah, well, some of it too is how fast the back's unloading. And everybody was talking about, you know, how fast they were going through the finish line. There's a straightaway there, and a lot of guys are in third gear. We're in second gear and still got a few reps to go, and we were doing 92 miles an hour through the start finish line in second gear in this car. Even getting out of the throttle, not necessarily even getting on the brake, is doing it. The first time in my life, I actually wasn't happy with the, that big end straightaway because I brought a car, you know, we left the big power car back at the shop and it was fun. You know, we gave it everything we had. We just couldn't out horsepower down that back straightaway at the end. And I know I made them wait over there for an hour after they were done with their best time, but you know, <laughs> you gotta keep trying, you gotta keep pushing, you gotta keep driving. I drive as hard as I possibly can, and if we win, and if we beat somebody on the caliber of Jordan Priestley and, and what he brings to the table, then you really know that you've done something. Made me push harder, I got down to a better time. Had he not been pushing there, I might have got, you know, pushed back to third place because I was pushing hard, you know, to, to hit that time. I was watching him, and he technically he was hitting all his marks, and he laid it down and he kicked butt. So you've got that car dialed, that thing is way down on his nose. Yeah, it, see, it's pretty flat. Getting a rev limiter that time. No, I short shift at the second. Just so I can get it over with when I'm not so busy, you know? Yeah. I, I just come down here. It up, right? Yeah, it's when I got start going straight, I get it going and pull it back in gear again and just leave it there. Traditionally, the autocross is my strong suit, and speed stop, and the road course is Ken's strong suit. And it doesn't happen very often, but he got us in that event, you know. But that, that's good because then that means the next time I'm going to come back and I'm going to push even harder and we're going to have a little more power under the hood and, you know, it just keeps driving the sport. You know, we spent a lot of time and effort last year building the C28 fifth gen Camaro and it's got gobs of horsepower. It's got an MTI sequential gearbox in it, you know, you just pull it in gear. You don't have to lift off the gas or push in the clutch. It just pulls it right in gear. Everything's pushed to the max on this car, but it is really fun to drive and it is incredibly fast and powerful.